Hello there, everyone. Zan Talk here with Selectstar Gaming, and welcome to another episode here of Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. Uh, continuing on from the stream archive footage that I played a while back, but let's go ahead and kick it off to past me, who's going to be continuing through the game. Take it away. A knife, a revolver, and now an axe. Is this clue? We also had a candlestick earlier. And a rope. What are we missing? Just a lead pipe? And a wrench. There's a video camera here? Okay. Interesting. First thing, I want to check, look at this real quick. Okay, so, okay, so there was two. Is, oh, that's right, there were two escape rooms on this route. I actually forgot about that. I forgot there was a second one. Okay, well. I think we're going to hit another ending tonight here. Whether or not we'll get a fourth, uh, I don't know about that. We'll definitely get one more. There's blood on the chair. Do you think this was the dead guys? Yeah, probably. Is there anything else about it? No. Okay. A camcorder? It looks like it's pointed at the door. Well, the power's on. Why would someone want to videotape a door? I think this kind of camera records through a hard drive. But it doesn't look like this one's recording anything. What do you mean? Well, it's just sending whatever it sees to something. And what does it see? The door? Control panel for the electronic lock. I guess I've got to put in a passcode. I don't think it's just about numbers. There's a hole in the bottom of it right there. I think you need to put a key in there first. Fair. A plaque of the door didn't say anything. And that's, we're assuming this is the exit. Don't even really have to try this door to know that it's locked. Yeah, figures. Okay. It's a lamp. But it doesn't turn on. I don't think there's anything special about it. This, however, is a music box. But not the kind that you would put a disc in. Right, Kelly? Oh, it's one of those old music boxes. How about we wind it up? Why does it sound like that? Is it broken? The pins on the cylinder are shaped all weird. I don't think those are pins. It looks like someone put something else on top of it. I think we're going to have to take it apart to figure out what's going on, don't you? A bed. There's nothing in it. Hmm. They look like batteries. There's a cable running from them to the monitor. A chair. What's the deal with this? Is this some kind of code? There are four rows of numbers and letters. They all start with a zero and end with eight, F, N, or V, respectively. Maybe this is something to do with number bases? Ah, great. More of that shit. A numerical system chart found in the captain's quarters. 10 in base 10 is written as A in hexadecimal. Therefore, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is Z, 14 is E, and so on. This chart showed the rules for each number numerical numeral system. Ah, fucking why? Ah, it's fucking. Ugh. I ain't writing all that down. That, that'll, that'll just screenshot that shit. Which means all the sound goes away for a little bit. Okay, just gonna put that right there. This one shows the central staircase on C deck. I don't recognize the room on this one. The screen shows the big hospital room. There's just some random hallway on this one. The screen is showing what happens at the central staircase on B deck. The screen shows what's going on in a small room somewhere that I don't recognize. And the room on this screen looks really fancy. There's a bunch of weird buttons on here. You probably switch what you see on the screens. Do you know how to work this thing? Uh, why don't we just press one of these? Like this one. 
Well, I guess it does change! What the hell is this? There's nothing on the monitor. Just static. I thought those were words. Okay. Hey, isn't the door on that screen the one right behind us? You're right. So, whatever that camera sees is sent to this screen in real time. I wonder if that means something, you know? Hmm. Huh. Junpei snorted with grim humor for the second time since he came come into the room. The four screens along the bottom had a single letter in each, spelling out zero. Z-E-R-O, huh. It's like he's making fun of us. What do you think? He turned to Clover, who was standing next to him. And Clover nodded. Nothing. It seemed that she cared about little. Of course, Junpei could hardly blame her. Given the strain he, she was surely under, Junpei was somewhat surprised she responded at all. Still, he had to ask. He gestured toward the corpse. What about him? Do you think that's really Zero? Clover shook her head weakly. There's no way that's him. Didn't I tell you already? Zero is one of us. Yeah, right. Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be Zero. Huh? Don't you get it? The letters that spell Zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes he's got on, and of course, the bracelet with a Zero on it. It's too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, this is Zero right here. This dead body is Zero. <laughs> Isn't that kind of fishy? You're right. Only an idiot wouldn't see through something like that. No, that, that's not the point. So I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work. Which makes me wonder. I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. Uh -huh. Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was Zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking around with a Zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said, I did it! <laughs> Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything Zero is supposed to be. Just like we did. Uh -huh. The killer must have known we wouldn't think he was Zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers. This isn't Zero. Where's the real me then? See if you can catch me. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. That's really twisted. But it almost seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. Junpei bent down next to the corpse. All right, let's get back to the point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is. Why would I? Hmm. Junpei sat back on his haunches and thought. We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. Huh? We gotta flip him over. How else are we gonna search his pockets? <laughs> Clover didn't move. Okay, fine. Guess I'll do it. Junpei had no choice but to move the body on here his own. We go. <clears throat> he grabbed hold of an area not completely covered in blood and shoved. It took a moment, but eventually Junpei felt the man's bulk begin to shift. But just as it did, huh? Something fell. From the man's left wrist. Hey, it's the... The bracelet with zero on the face. Oh God! Junpei stared at the bracelet. This man, he's dead, isn't he? That wasn't fucking obvious. Oh my God! Oh my God! 
This is why you have some potato qualities here, Junpei. Although, you, you guys are right, his VA is pretty good. No, it's just, I, I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. If his bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. Well, uh, he looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though. <laughs> you know? I mean, if, if there wasn't all this blood, he'd almost look like he was still alive. Junpei, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Dude! Dying from a bomb going off inside of you? I mean, that's just... Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. I, I think the explosion must have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. His sister is right there, you asshole! And... Uh, oh. Suddenly Junpei realized what he was saying. How could he have been so cruel? He clapped his hands over his mouth. But it was already too late. He turned to look at Clover, and she was glaring at him furiously. What did you just say? Her words sounded cold. He knew an apology could hardly atone for what he'd done, but he tried anyway. Oh, man. Uh, I am... I, I am so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. I, I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean... No, that's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? I figured that's probably what she was honing in on. Uh, arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did, but I mean, I didn't didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. There's no way I was going to see the details. Clara took a quick, deep breath. Are you sure it was his left arm? Junpei thought back. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure it was. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't see I don't see a left arm. I I got no proof. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! <laughs> she shoved her face closer to his. He could see the fire in her eyes. Junpei winced and swallowed. Yeah, he did. Uh, it was pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. <laughs> no sooner were the words out of his mouth than Clover's expression changed. Clover? <laughs> What's wrong? Look, I'm sorry if I said anything. Suddenly, she was crying. Junpei wasn't sure what to Thank do. Thank you. It was close to the last thing he'd expected huh? to hear. What are you... Junpei had no idea what had just happened. He didn't think he'd done anything worthy of thanks, and he couldn't understand why she would have chosen that moment to begin crying. So he simply stood there, confused. Thank you so much, Junpei. She thanked him again. And then something even stranger happened. It's a good thing June's not here or she would misread this entire situation. Clover threw herself with the Junpei's surprised hey, arms. Uh, what's going on with you? I'm sorry, it's just... I'm so happy! Why? The body in the shower room... It, it isn't his! It isn't my brother! Huh? It's not Snake! Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... She stopped herself. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be talking about this. Uh. Jimpe decided it would be prudent not to press her for any more information. If she did not wish to tell him, she certainly had a reason for doing so. Perhaps more importantly, however, if Clover was so certain that she was likely right. That meant that the body in the shower room wasn't Snake. It wasn't much, but that knowledge lifted some of the weight from Jimpe's heart. He's still alive. I'm, I'm so happy. Tears showed in her eyes. Those tears melted Junpei's heart. As she cried, she pushed herself up against his chest like a child. Junpei put his arms around her and held her tight. I'm so glad. Uh -huh. Junpei, you were right. Huh? No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important. And that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Clever, you do realize that I pulled that out of my ass, right? Clever reached into her pocket and pulled something out. Uh, that's... It was a laminated bookmark with a four-leaf clover. I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody. I was angry and miserable. 
But because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me, I... Yeah. Jinpei hadn't thought his words would have had such an effect on her. Her words were making him feel a little awkward. Thank you so much, Junpei. She looked up at him. He scratched his nose and pretended to notice something interesting somewhere else in the room. Oh, if you really want to thank somebody, you, you, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Why? Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf, I got that from him too. Oh. Um. Uh. Uh. Which is connected to the experiment. Then suddenly... Clover broke away from Junpei. Uh-huh. He looked confused. He hadn't thought she'd react that poorly. Clover began to pace across the room. Also, no. Clover doesn't stab us. Six steps to the left. Six steps to the right. Another six to the left. And then she stopped. Did... Did Santa really tell you those things? Yes, and he said he hates all four of those words. Her eyes were serious, but not angry. Yeah, he, he did. Did I uh, say something wrong? Oh no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news, I think. You think? Santa knew about the words and the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. Subjects? The other people who were in the experiment nine years ago, with my brother and me. All right. Now, is this experiment, was this the other non games? Because we know that her brother was in it. Was she also in it? And we just are jumbling now learning this? And that Santa was also in it? Am I the only person in Possible June who doesn't know shit about shit? Why the fuck am I here? But he's blind. And I was part of the Nevada test group. So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, 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 okay, time out. Junpei held up his hands. He took a deep breath and let Let's it out. just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. And don't let Ace interrupt us this time. You, you, you gotta start with one and then move to two and three and four and so on. Shouldn't we start with zero? Just, just saying. If you don't tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never gonna be able to figure it out. Just want to mention, you've made all the correct text choices and are now unwrapped with the true ending? What the fuck?! How have I stumbled on the true ending?! How?! <laughs> God damn it, I wanted the true ending last! <laughs> oh, God damn it. Uh, it's up to you if you want to pursue the other rings first. There's still a substantial chunk of game left before the true end. Ah, uh, fuck. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and save the game right now then. Just so that we have a clear spot. Jesus. Absolute mad lad. Yeah, apparently. A fucking apparently. God damn it. I thought... I thought with the, how this weird path looked, I thought this was gonna be the true ending. But god damn it. God fucking damn it. Um, you can finish the stream first, though. Okay. Uh, I guess, like, I'm assuming at, at this point, Kelly, I'm assuming that there's gonna be, like, a choice here where I can either go to true ending or I go to fake ending, whichever one of these is, you know, whichever, I don't know. Uh, if that's the case, give me the wrong answer for the truth ending first when we get to that point, because I do want to see the true ending very last. I didn't know we were on the correct path, motherfucker. I thought, uh, you know... It does make sense, because this is the path where uh, Clover found the captain's room, and when I clicked to use room one, I was thinking to myself, I wanted to do the one that wasn't the, that had the captain's room first, but I just didn't remember which one it was until after I clicked door one, so it's like, ah, fuck it, we'll keep going. So, uh, oops. My bad. But yeah. I think we'll automatically put you on the path, but once it does, just save and go back. Okay. Okay. Let, let me know at what point when I need to stop where I'm at and go backwards. Just, just let me know exactly when we're at that point. 
Clover nodded. All right. Let's start with this experiment. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Do you know about morphogenetic fields? Man, I've been told so much about these lately. Morphogenetic fields. He did. Ooh. And the realization sent chills down Junpei's spine. All right, how about how this? this? Theory, Theory of the, of the telepathic, telepathic mechanism. mechanism. I think Lotus mentioned something like that. Junpei recounted what Lotus had told him earlier. Clover nodded. Hmm, telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So, what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. Exactly the same thing. So, Nonary Games. What? The Nonary Game. Nine people were put on this boat, and nine others were put in the building in Nevada, and the game started. Junpei grabbed the side of his head. Look, I'm sorry, but I, I don't get it. How do you not get it? What do the nonary game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Don't interrupt. Let her tell the story. Am I missing something here? A lot. Clover bit her lip. She blinked back sudden tears. What had happened to her in Nevada? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops in your head? That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you add danger to that equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. So you're saying the nonary game was supposed to introduce that element of danger? Yeah, but it couldn't be just any old danger. It had to be life and death. And... And... Someone did... Actually die. A girl. Santa's sister. Huh. Junpei felt the sudden grip of despair on his heart. Something deep and distant and powerful squeezed. And for a moment, he felt very, very empty. And alone. She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada. I never met her. But I did hear her name. Uh. Her name was... <sighs> Go away, Ace! The sound of the door opening was like a gunshot. Junpei spun around. Oh, my apologies. I seem to have disturbed you. Yes. Ace. You two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. Ace glanced down at the floor. Where I admittedly forgot that there was a body here. At the corpse covered in blood. At any rate, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? I'm having a little trouble and I could really use your assistance. Uh... Come on, it'll only take a moment. There's about to be a stabbing. With that, he turned and walked back toward the communications office. Clover waited until he was out of sight, <coughs> then coughed, and spoke in a small, quiet voice. I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait! Clover ignored him. From outside, Junpei could hear Ace Junpei? calling. Junpei? What are you doing in there? Hurry up! <sighs> Grumbling to himself, Junpei stomped off toward the communications office. Okay! Well. Hmm. Ah! Well then, that's a lot. That is a lot. Uh, okay, well, we are on a path. A hook. That, that wasn't a joke. I know, man. Hey, Ace, look. It's a monkey with glasses. How on earth did you arrive at that conclusion? Well, you know, it's no worse than your jokes. Hey, Ace, look. It's a model of a steam train. How on earth did you... A pair of headphones. I can't hear anything. Guess whatever they're connected to doesn't work anymore. Or it's just not playing any audio. Just a normal light. Well, it won't turn on, so maybe not that normal. And we got this thing again. The telegraphy and machine for transmitting Morse code. <coughs> Goddamn. I started seeing an SOS earlier, but I doubt that did anything. Zero would never make it that easy. So, you think it's broken? 
No, it works. I'm just not sure it actually transmits anything outside of the ship. Huh. Okay. So we got that music box. So that drawer is the only thing that's locked. And there's no keyhole. An electric lock, perhaps? Take a look at the left side of the drawer. Oh yeah, there's some cables over there. That must mean... This is a really... <laughs> long cable. The tip is hooked onto one of the desk's drawers. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Hey! What is this? It's blank. There's nothing written on it. A white piece of paper. It's blank. Are we done with invisible ink? Is that the thing here? A chair. Alright, fucking dickhead. Where? Hey, so you wanted to talk to me. Small screwdrivers. Okay. Hmm. A set of small screwdrivers. Perhaps we could use them to dismantle small devices? Alright! This screwdriver ought to make short work of this music box. And now we only have the cylinder. Well, there are a number of pins on some pieces of metal that look rather right like fans attached to it. Hmm. There's something in the drawer. Ink! A bottle of ink. It's filled with ink. Who'd have thunk? Out of curiosity? Um, I guess I'll put the ink on the cylinder. That was a random bit. I didn't think anything would happen there. Just gonna point that out. That was luck. Oh, yes, I see. You put ink on the cylinder. Yeah. If I roll it across a piece of paper, the pins and the fans will leave marks on it, right? Tends to make dots and the fans will leave lines. I was wondering if it was gonna be Morse code. Alright then, show us. I'm just gonna roll a cylinder across a piece of paper, and if I'm right, the ink should give us this. I don't know Morse code. Just as you suspected, right? We have a pattern of dots and lines on the paper. Imagine it's Morse code. These dots and lines are the dots and dashes of Morse code. So let's just go to the thing. Let's play it. I guess none of this matters. An old telegraph machine. I'll be honest, I have no idea how it works. Me either. That thing's suspicious. Okay. No, I wanna... Come on. Get... Me. There we fucking go. Jesus. All right, I've got the motor I'm supposed to enter. If I do this right, something will happen, I hope. All right, let's give this a shot. How do I... That's the last one, and... Yeah! Excellent work, Junpei. Good job. You seem to have figured it out. You've unlocked the drawer. Alright, Aza, if you... Let me open this up in case you need to get a screenshot. There's a chance, so I'll give you, like, five seconds. I tried learning some words code a while back, but I forgot it. I know E is a duct, just like Jurist number four. Yeah, best Jurist. Alright, now let's go see... What's in here? That's say Alice on it. A red file lay in the drawer. Did you pay reached down and picked it up? Looks like there's something on the cover. A L L I C E. All ice. Alice. Does this mean? Junpei couldn't hold back. He had to know what was in that file. Each page was covered with strange characters. Why do we have hieroglyphs? They look like tiny drawings of birds, snakes, insects, horned animals, wings, and even kneeling humans. Were, there were many pages in the file, and each was full of these strange what the symbols. What hell is this? 
He didn't realize he'd spoken out loud until Ace looked over at him. They are hieroglyphs, a form of writing used in ancient Egypt. Ancient Egypt? That's right. Can you read them? Of course. I can't. <laughs> what would make you think I could? What the hell? Should we pay flip through a few more pages? It wasn't just one or two pages that were covered in the strange symbols. Every single page was covered in them. Whoa, the, the whole thing's like that. Trying to read them was pointless. Junpei wasn't going to waste any more time with them. He made to close the file, and something fell uh, out. What's this? He bent down and picked it up. Oh, a, a key card. There was a symbol on it that reminded Junpei of the symbols for the Saturn and Mercury key cards. This one, however, had a dot in the center of the male symbol. Uranus. That's the Uranus symbol. Junpei looked over to see Ace examining the card. In addition to the Uranus symbol, there were three words engraved on the card Something's as well. Something's written on the bottom. Bottom deck library. This must be the key to the library, then. So it would seem. Bottom deck library. Oh. Junpei remembered something he'd heard from Seven when they'd been in the chemical closet. Seven said something like... Alice sleeps, sleeps in a small, small chamber, chamber past the forest, forest of knowledge, knowledge beneath the navel of the gigantic. Could beneath the navel mean the bottom deck? And the forest of knowledge is the library? Then could Alice be in a room somewhere beyond the library? What's wrong? Something on your mind? Junpei blinked. Only then did he notice Ace looking at him. Curiosity and concern written across his face in equal parts. Um, yeah. I just remembered something. Is that so? What about? Well, don't laugh, okay? There was no reason for Junpei to hide his thoughts. He began to explain his theory to Ace. Then he stopped. It wouldn't make any sense if Ace didn't know who Alice was supposed to be. So he told Ace everything June had told him. The Egyptian Priestess and Ice Nine. Interesting. And the woman who wouldn't melt, who was recovered from the Titanic disaster? They called her All Ice, which eventually turned into Alice. And she was purchased by an English millionaire who called himself Lord Gordain. According to Seven, this ship is where he hid Alice. And you think that he hid her in a small room, beyond the library on the bottom deck? Yeah. W well, I mean, it is just a theory. A gay theory. Hmm. Ace stared off into the distance, his hand slowly and absentmindedly stroking his beard. After a few moments, his hand stopped. He turned slowly to look at Junpei, and his brows drew together. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term Cass? No. Cass? It stands for Cells Alive System. It is an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. Put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands as it crystallizes, damaging the cell membrane. CAS, however, works differently. The object to be frozen is supercooled using magnetic fields, and then frozen instantly and uniformly, giving ice crystals no time to form. It was originally developed for the preservation of food, as an alternative to the normal freezing process. Now, however, there are rumors that it can be used for other things. What do you mean, other things? Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space travel. Mm. Space travel? Are, are you serious? Surely you've heard of suspended animation. Yeah. Cryogenic freezing? It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films. People are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through space. That was what Jubei understood what Ace was suggesting. Whoa, 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 wait a minute there. Ace looked at him and raised an eyebrow. Are you saying that Alice was frozen using that cast thing? Well, I'm sure the possibility is quite low, but it is a possibility. If this special ice you call Ice 9 does indeed exist, and casts were used to freeze her into that sort of ice instantaneously. You think she could be alive? Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only talking about possibilities. The melting point for Ice 9 is 96 degrees, right? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature, 
<laughs> That's nuts. Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? You're quite right. It does sound unbelievable. But if she had, then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. You mean the guy dressed like a captain? Yes. He was dead when we found him. Clearly, he was murdered. But if he was murdered, then by whom? It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door one. That door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. Who was it that opened that door? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly, the two of them could not have opened door one, or any other door for that matter. Yeah. Who else then could have done so? Junpei thought for a second. Nobody. After Santa and Lotus used the Earth Key, they turned back and met up with me in June. Then we returned to the large hospital room and found Ace, Seven, and Clover. While we'd gone into the shower room, Ace, Seven, and Clover had stayed behind. But it's impossible for those three to open door one. Hmm, but what about when June and I took the elevator to door two? No, still won't work. We were only gone five minutes. No human being could have run to the captain's quarters, killed that guy in there, and run back that fast. It would be impossible for any of us to be the murderer. That being the case, who could have killed him? Wouldn't it make sense if his killer was someone who had been in the ship for some time? <sighs> A person like that would know the ship well. They would know the locations of all the hidden passages and secret doors. The numbered door would mean nothing to someone like that. It would be a simple thing for them to enter the captain's quarters. Then you're saying the killer was Alice? What? Oh, what the fuck? Uh, okay, so update on the uh, Morse code. According to Azza, it says 3, 5, and then something unknown, and then Z. At this point, I'm not expecting that to have any relevance to the actual game, and it's just they picked some dots and lines. But maybe, we can ask. Uh, and it's kind of like how they're keeping Walt Disney's body frozen. Yeah. And apparently someday he'll become unthawed out on a ship, and he'll just kill people, I guess. He extrudes his thumb across his lips thoughtfully. Well, this is all only one possible theory. Yeah, 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 yeah. All ice. Alice. Is she really somewhere on the ship? Junpei had only one clue. The key card in his Maybe hand. This card will give me access to the forest of knowledge. And the big mystery. What could be there beyond the forest of knowledge? Anyway, whatever. It's gonna have to wait. I can't do anything right now. I'll come back to this later. He gripped the key card tighter and shoved it deep into his pocket. New fucking material! And a unique key! Oh, I think we know what that key is gonna be for. A key with a leather case. It isn't metal. My guess would be ceramic? Jun Junpei, have you found a keyhole that might fit it? I have, actually. Uh, so... I wanna see what that thing was first in the file. If it's just... Oh yeah, it's just the information about Alice. Okay. That's... Literally it. Okay. Alright. So, I guess at that point, we can go back in here. And there was this thing. So my my guess on how to open this door. Zero. So I'm looking at the letters of the alphabets to see like what they correspond to, because we had this other thing that talked about the letters of the alphabet. They uh No, not that. This one. It says 11 is B. Oh, wait. It's 11 is B. Oh. I, look, I wrote it down wrong. Hang on a ticket. Back. Okay, so if this is what I think it's supposed to be, then I'm supposed to take the letters in the board zero's name, 
and put it through this. So, uh, so E would be 14. So my thought process, and it's going to depend on how many numbers that this thing takes, is I can see it's spelled a zero with that, but I don't know how many numbers it's to take. And if it takes less than uh, eight numbers, then I have an alternate idea. Maybe the key I got earlier. Ah, it does take eight. Haha. -ha. Just put that key in and now it's on. Junpei, look. There's a minus sign on the screen. That's not a minus sign. There's eight of them, though. That probably means we've got to put in eight digits. Do you think you can figure it out? Uh, yeah. So I was thinking if it was going to be eight digits, then I would have to, like, just do the... I forget the word. The digital root, not the digital root, root exactly type thing, but like adding one and four to be five, and then it would be five for E. That's what I was thinking there. But let's just place the buttons it. God damn it. Let me type it. I don't need you to explain it every time. Oh, wait, wait how is this? Okay, good, it's gonna push them over. I wasn't really sure what was happening there. Fuck yeah. It worked! Good job, Junpei. Excellent. You seem to have unlocked it. Good work, Junpei. Alright, let's go! Much better than apps and boxes! Fuck F and box. <laughs> they stepped out of the captain's quarters and into another hallway. The hallway stretched out in front of Junpei for a bit, before turning left like a great backward L. All right, let's go. First, let's save the game. Oh wait, hang on. There we go. And I also want to check this. Oh, okay, so we're not at whatever this part is yet. Junpei rounded the corner and took off down the straightaway. He ran and ran and ran and into the hallway with the door. The next door. He made straight Wait, for it. A piece of paper. He was nearly halfway to it when he noticed a piece of paper in the middle of the hall floor. Junpei skidded to a halt. This is. He dropped down to his knees and hands and quickly tore the paper off the floor. Map of the ship's interior for a deck. What's wrong? Ace, slightly slower by virtue of his advanced age, had finally caught up to Junpei. I found a map for this floor. He showed Ace what he snatched from the wall. He looked at it long enough to determine what it was, and nodded. I see. With that, he began running again, past Junpei. Well, that was anticlimactic. I should keep this, though. Junpei shoved the map into his pocket and got up to follow Ace. But something stopped hey, him. Uh, where's Clover? Oh no. He turned around and Clover was nowhere to be seen. Damn Ace, did you already kill Clover? I'm gonna fucking kill Ace. Junpei muttered angrily under his breath and took off back the way he'd come. As he stomped around the corner, he saw her. Oh, thank God. She was standing in front of the door to the captain's quarters, her hand on the doorknob. Clover! Huh? As Junpei watched, she closed it, gently and quietly. <sighs> What the hell are you doing? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Clover had unconsciously put her hands through the pockets of her jacket, as if trying to hide the number zero bracelet. What the hell is that? What? You've got something in your pocket. What is it? Oh, this? Uh, um, this is... a note. A note? Oh, that's also possible. Yeah, I found it in the pocket of the guy with the captain's clothes. It said something about the darkness of the sinister hand or something. What the hell? Uh, let me see it. Uh, no, not right. But Junpei wasn't going to get to see it. From the other side of the hall, he heard Ace's hey, voice. Hey, Junpei, Clover, what are you two doing? Hurry up. He's getting mad. Clover's been, really been the star of tonight's stream, it seems like. I'll show it to you later, all right? Come on, we gotta hurry. Before Junpei could protest... She was gone. Around the corner and off down the long stem of the L. A note? A note. Eh. Junpei was curious. 
But there was something else that bothered From him. The look of that pocket. Yes. It doesn't particularly look like just a note. Jeez, what are you thinking? Ah, for crying out loud. Junpei did his best to convince himself that it would make sense later and ran up after Clover. Junpei pushed through the door and found himself in a large room with a large set of stairs. The big stairs. Huh. So this is where it ends up. Just like it says on the map. It was just what he'd expected to see after reading the map. His I see after reading the map himself meant that Ace had probably realized the same thing. Ace, did he head down? He put his hand on the handrail and leaned over to look down. Oh, there he is. Where? I don't fucking see him. Look, the four others are there too. And not just Ace. Santa, June, Seven, and Lotus as well. Really? Let's join them. Junpei and Clover glanced at each other and hurried down the stairs. They reached B-Deck at the same time. Jumpy! Clover! June's face was excited. Something had happened. That much Junpei could tell by simply What's looking up? at her. Given the situation, he was not inclined to be excited about sudden developments. June, however, couldn't contain we found herself. It. Found what? We found it! What did you find? The last door! We found door nine! Both of them or just one? What? Come on! Just follow us! We'll explain on the way! Okay. Seven turned and jumped off down the stairs. Well, if that's the case. Wait for me. We should get going as well. The rest followed. Jumpy! We finally made it! Don't call me that. The relief and excitement in her voice echoed what each one of them felt. It's finally time. Junpei wasn't quite ready to believe they'd really done it. At least, not just yet. Still, if everyone said that it was door nine, then it probably was. Reach the end. Unless somebody fucked up making a six. He could feel his heart racing. A mixture of anticipation and fear ran through his veins. He could feel his legs shaking. He was doing his best to maintain a sense of healthy skepticism, but he couldn't deny that the prospect of escape was an exciting one. Something's wrong. Only three to five people can go through the numbered door. Seven of us are on our way to door nine. That means that, best case scenario, there will be two of us who have to stay behind. And Ace will be one of them, because fuck that guy. Two people. Is there a way? Junpei looked over at the clock. 4.30. We've only got 90 minutes left. I've got no time to wonder about it now. Hey, Junpei! June! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Santa's voice jolted Junpei out of his reverie. Let's go, Jumpy! June took off down the stairs, jogging as quickly as she could. Yeah. Junpei followed. As a group. They piled onto the elevator and rode impatiently down to E-Deck. It looked familiar. There was a metal grate between the two elevators. Seven grabbed hold of it and began to talk. I know I told you I'd explain it earlier, but honestly, there ain't much to explain. After we split off from you guys, the four of us got into the elevator on the left and then took us to the other side of the grate. After that, we headed down another hallway. It took us toward the bow and eventually to the number six that you two found earlier. We opened it and kept going. There was another locked door behind it, like usual. But this time we had to complete two different areas before we could unlock it. Once we were through that door, there was another hallway that went the other direction, toward the stern. So, on your way, you found the elevator. That's right. So, in other words, you kind of did a lap, huh? You came from that side to this side. Yeah. With that settled, Jinpei looked around. So, where's the number nine door? Over here. Seven began walking down the hallway that led toward the stern. Uh, Green and the others broke into a jog to keep up with him. By the way, they've been walking for a while. June and Silent stepped with Junpei when she spoke. You know, it's because of Santa that we're all here right now. That is a very interesting sentence. The way you phrase that. Huh? That all 
seven of us are going to door nine. What? You don't get it? Santa, Seven, and Lotus. What's their digital route? Nine. Nine. It's nine. That's right. They could have just left me behind and kept going if they'd wanted to. But they didn't. Yes, because Santa wouldn't let them. He said, we can't leave June and the others behind. That's why we went looking for you guys. And then you got on the elevator and went back to the central staircase. That's right. Hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't have called that one. Uh, that Santa would be the one to stick up for you. Jubei felt his eyebrows knit as he considered that. Oh, don't get me wrong. Perhaps June had sensed Junpei's concern. I don't mean that Seven and Lotus said they wanted to leave me behind. We were just talking about it, and Santa objected to it first. Is that so? Junpei was about to respond when Seven suddenly we're here. stopped. In front of them stood so, a door. Is this? Yeah. Jimmy couldn't see Seven's face, but he could see There's him no nod. Other place for us to go. Nope. Just look around. There's a big old iron wall at the end of the hallway. The other hallways on the left and right are blocked by metal grates. I see. It looked as though Seven was right. The door in front of them was their only All right. choice. Let's get moving. He pulled open the door. And walked in. <sighs> Jinpei took a deep breath and followed. Oh. It appeared they'd been telling the truth. No way. The first thing Jinpei saw as he entered the room was the number. Nine. Like all the others, it was a rough thing made of red paint. The door decorated sat on the back wall of a rectangular room. <laughs> Jinpei ran up to it. The nine door. It was a large double door with powerful styling. Something about it was almost majestic, and it made the red paint look especially garish. We're finally here. Junpei grabbed the handle and shook. It didn't budge, but then he hadn't really expected it to. The red was bolted into the wall next to the door. It's display red. Vacant. No doubt about it. This is door nine. <laughs> Keep an eye on the flow track. Something's about to happen. I'm assuming that it's gonna that what the something is is gonna put me on one of these two paths. Uh, and now earlier I said that I wanted to do the true ending last, and that once we got to that point, I'll just save and we'd go back and do something else. But I'm actually changing my mind on this. As we were going through the last, as we were going through the last uh, escape room, I was kind of thinking to myself about it, and I felt like you know it would kind of just like ruin the flow of things. I felt like if I just got to the tip top of the true ending and decided, nah, let's do something else and come back to the true ending later, where we're gonna forget some details. So I think instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna follow this path to whatever it leads us to, and then. Uh, and then I'll get the rest of the endings after that. I'll just, I'll just, we'll get the true ending, unless something else weird fucking happens. And we'll just scoop up the last of these routes, uh, after the fact. I think that's just gonna be the best thing story-wise. In that case, go for it. Oh, hell yeah. Hey, did we get the worst ending yet? Let's do that one last. I think we did get the worst ending. I think that was this one. From what Kelly told me. This was the worst ending. If there's one that's even worse than that though, you know what, I am down to get that one last. Uh, that one hits hard if you get it first. Uh, the knife one, yeah, I bet, that that would make sense. If like, especially if you didn't know that there are multiple endings, you'd just be like, really? That's what the game, it's like, no joke. If I did not, if I, was, if I had bought this game on DS way back in the day, when I first heard about its title and I grew interested in it, if I played the game, didn't know there were multiple endings and got that knife ending, I would just be like, well, this game fucking sucked, and I would have never, ever, ever looked at it again. So, that's the thing. So yeah, if there, honestly, if there is a worse one than that, uh, don't tell me what happens in it, but I do want to know how to get to it so I can know how to do it last, because I think that'd be fun. So, th thank you for bringing that up. But let's keep fucking going. Oh, finally! This is the last... Alright, and I think that's going to be a good stopping point here for today's episode. Uh... <laughs> According to these after facts, so I don't really know strictly what I just did, but I hope you enjoyed what we just saw, 
and tune in for the next episode of Nine Hours, Nine Birds, Nine Doors. See you all next time. Bye, everyone.